Hi. Hey. Hi. It is um, such a pleasure to be able to talk to all of you after screening Black and Blue on Tuesday. Um, Dion, Mr. Taylor, where should I forward my therapist? Uh, where should I forward his bill? <laughs> <laughs> Send it over to me. Yes, 108 minutes of total stress and triggering. Um, this film is absolutely fantastic. I want to congratulate all of you on a, another wonderful project. Um, Dion, you have become kind of synonymous with creating projects that leave something on your spirit when you leave the theater. Traffic had me stressed out. Intruder made me lock my doors. And now Black and Blue. Um, the timing of the film couldn't be more perfect, if you ask me, considering a lot of the things that are going on, um, you know, with Botham and with Tatiana. Um, tell me how you feel about this film coming out right now. I'm, um, I'm, I mean, I don't really have the words to describe how excited I am about the movie and um, how it's performing with people and audiences. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's amazing. You know, I, it was funny because a couple of weeks ago we began to do the press run and I've actually, you know, obviously independently been promoting the movie for like four months by myself. Mm -hmm. Um, I was just like, man, I just did this with the intruder. And, um, you know, that, that experience was so visceral because people really responded to that film. And when I did a couple of screens with Black and Blue and seeing people responding much bigger and much deeper than that movie, I said, man, this is something really special. And um, I think the messaging around the film is so critical and so right now. I mean, yeah. mm -hmm. it's almost it's almost like we're being blessed to be able to have a film like this that could drop right now during the exact same moment that this is in, you know, polarizing the culture with his body cams and Black versus blue. I mean, it's playing out right in front of us on Fox and CNN every day. Yeah. You know, as I was watching the film, um, I literally thought to myself, I said, no stone was left unturned. You dealt with no. blue blood versus the blue, you know, the blue wall, corrupt police, body cam, the struggle of black cops. I mean, we watched Alicia West literally go through it. And then the repercussions of being a good cop and speaking out against corrupt police officers. So there was literally no stone left unturned in this film. That's true. And um, have you received any feedback from actual law enforcement who have seen the film? Uh, yeah, I actually have um, a couple. Well, obviously going into the movie, I wanted to make sure that I did it correctly. So I spent a lot of time with police officers. Um, mm -hmm. But since, the movie has opened. I have talked to a couple of police officers. As a matter of fact, what's interesting is um, two I know seen the film and really, really loved it a lot. And then after the New York premiere, which was pretty incredible, I walked out of the theater and ran into five police officers on the street who all came right up to me and said, we cannot wait to go see this movie. As a matter of fact, I took a picture with all of them. Wow. And, um, I asked one of the officers why, and he said, because it looks like something that we all need to be standing up for. And I just mm -hmm. thought that was really powerful to hear that. You know what I mean? And the movie is basically about integrity and, 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 and being a human and being for real. And at some point, not just associating yourself with the code or, or a code of ethics that you guys deem human. But the yeah. reality is if you do something wrong, no matter if you have a badge on or not, you should be accountable for that, and the people around you should be hold you accountable for that, especially when you're upholding the law. Do you know All what right. I mean? So it's funny. I hate to use the example, but I was just saying earlier that, you know, if, if me and you walk up to uh, around the back of this lady's house, which we just seen with Atiana Jefferson, and mm -hmm. you shoot the gun and I'm standing behind you, and you kill this woman in two seconds, me as your partner, it's not time for me to turn the body camera off and, and ask, what do we do? It's time for right. me to say, man, you made a mistake. Exactly. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? Like, you made Absolutely. a dumb mistake on the job, and you're in trouble for that, period. And I'm not going to vouch and say something different. And that's what's happening with, with, with the Black and the Blue movie. She basically mm -hmm. sees something. They want her to conform, and she yeah. does not. The reality is, in that split second, if they say, whoa, 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 hold on a minute, 
let's talk about this. If she would have said, all right, well, let's talk about it. Like, mm-hmm. She's like looking at them like, y'all, y'all done murdered somebody. You exactly. know what I mean? And, and, yes. and she's not done, and she's not giving the body camera. She's not going to let them have it. And it just becomes a, a chase of someone who's trying to do the right thing who has integrity. And uh, I think that's what is the most beautiful thing about the entire movie is out of everybody, her moral compass is correct, her light is bright, and she begins to shine that bright on the other characters like Tyrese, mm-hmm. on uh, Nafisha, and then mm-hmm. ultimately on her own partner who's corrupt. Yeah. You know, one of the things that I think is so beautiful, and Naomi and Nafisa did such a beautiful job in portraying their characters, but the last point that I really wanted to make to you, speaking to you as the director, is this film is going to spark a lot of conversation. I literally, after the screening, I stood up in the movie theater with some other moviegoers, and we stood there for an hour just talking about the film in whole and everything that it touched on. And it's definitely going to spark a lot of conversation. What is an officer to do when, you know, when their partner does the wrong thing because then they're going to be ostracized or they may become a target themselves? You know, the body cams, you know, and shout out to Alicia Westbrook. I was making sure that body cam was on. Like, as soon as this got in the, the thick of things, she made sure the body cam was on. But we have situations where officers are turning off the body cams or, for getting them in the car. So it will spark a lot of conversation, and it's conversation that needs to be had. And, you know, I love the fact that I sincerely appreciate you for creating a vessel that will also keep in this conversation going. So I definitely appreciate you for that. And just keep up the great work. You're so awesome. Um, Ms. Really, Harris. Really appreciate that. Thank you. <laughs> no problem. Ms. Harris. My first Hello. you. Hi, Miss Harris, Miss Naomi hey. Harris. You are a force to be reckoned with, ma'am. Um, my very first question to you, and it's probably going to be a little weird, but this thing sat on my spirit for two days. When you were running through that alley and you hit that meter, was that just an accident that got perfectly caught on tape? <laughs> or was that a I picked that out now and realized that that was actually me getting injured and my kind director sat next to me mm-hmm. sat next to me right now decided to put that in the movie <laughs> oh see but, uh, yeah. that was just one of many examples of me injuring my injuring myself on this uh, film let me tell so you definitely something sorry. when you hit that meter mm-hmm. everybody in the theater said very much at the same time <laughs> <laughs> yeah. every every screen around the country they screened <laughs> down because yeah, that's, that's what, that's what happened when it when it really filmed. Everyone was uh, screamed down yeah. when it really happened. Yeah, like, they thought I hit my head. I hit my shoulder, but they thought I hit my head. Oh my gosh! I am so sorry that happened to you. But when I tell you that that resonated in my soul as someone who has hit my head by accident. So um, I just want to ask you that first. But you know, this role is different from some of the things that I've seen you in before. And you were so vulnerable, but yet, like Dion said, you were a, a, a shining beam. Your integrity stood firm. You were unshakable in doing the right thing. And when you said, be the change, I felt a, a part of my spirit just slide out the chair in the theater when you said, be the change. What mm-hmm. did you find to be most challenging or eye-opening while preparing for the role of Alicia West? Oh, gosh. Um, I think the most challenging for me was definitely all the physical stuff uh, yeah. because I really wasn't prepared for it. Um, okay. And um, because Dion lied to me, basically, <laughs> and said that um, I wasn't going to have to do any physical stuff. And then mm-hmm. I did end up having to do so much physical stuff. But it was worth it. Do you know what I mean? We couldn't, on yeah. our budget, has really, you know, got away with things like space replacement face replacement or what have you and it, it's just so much more authentic when you do it yourself but the nature of doing stunts is that you can't really do them without some form of injury without getting a bit of, of black and blue yourself you know yeah um and so that's that's definitely how we ended up so I found that really challenging but um it was it was such an incredible role to to play it's, it's like mm-hmm. the role of a lifetime really you know to play such an in, inspirational character who is the moral compass of the movie you know she yeah. she knows completely what is right and she's willing to risk her life to do what's right and I think 
what's so wonderful about the movie as well is that it really is like a plea to police officers as well mm-hmm. and around the world to do mm-hmm. the right thing because they really should be our heroes. At the moment, right. there's people that we look at and we're afraid of because we think, well, if I'm, you know, I don't want to be messing with them. I don't want to mm-hmm. get on the wrong side of them because you know where I'm going to end up. But they really should actually, in fact, be the people that we look up to and respect. They should be the Alicia's of this world. That's right. That's right. I just want to commend you just on another fantastic performance. And, you know, again, like I was mm-hmm. speaking to Dion, you in this role will spark a lot of conversation that definitely needs to happen. And um, I'm looking forward to seeing you get physical a little bit more. You're, going to <laughs> You're probably like, no, ma'am. <laughs> What, um, you, you're looking forward to me to doing more action, you mean? Yes, yes. I'm getting more <laughs> physical, even though I'm, I'm pretty sure you're like, uh, no, not right now. But um, just, just bravo for your performance. And um, it's oh, just such a pleasure you. to speak to you, especially after mm-hmm. watching the film. And you just left such a deep impression that will last for quite a long time with this particular role. I really um, appreciate that. No problem. It's not Lisa. <laughs> Hey, girl. Hey, girl. Hey. So, hey Missy, girl. Re- Missy really represents um, a lot of people in the black community, especially if you grew up in mm-hmm. the hood. Um, right. She is the person who had a lot of potential but possibly just didn't wasn't ready to just step outside the box and go out and try to live her best life and do something different. But she also mm-hmm. represents that breakdown of trust and disdain that a lot of people in the black community have for law enforcement. So talk a little Mm -hmm. bit about Missy's character, um, you know, and, and what you felt bringing to her character. Well, what I loved about Missy is, like you said, she represents uh, what, it, what it means and looks like to to stay in the hood and, and, and maybe not feel strong enough or mm-hmm. courageous enough to, to make a different decision. Um, and I think a lot of people are going to come to the theater and see this movie and, and her life is going to resonate with them and, and she's going to, they're going to relate to who she is and her circumstances. And it's more of, um, I, I love when you see this, the first scene with me and it open it up, opening up with her at the supermarket. And she's really, yeah. she's an overprotected mother who wants to make mm-hmm. sure her son survives another day when she sees him having that encounter with the police. At the moment, she doesn't know whether it's good or bad. She just knows right. that all of her experiences with the police were bad or her friend's experiences with the police were bad. So there's a vulnerability with her when it comes to police. Um, and, you know, with her being the childhood friend of Naomi's character, you know, it just shows how, you know, you can you can have everything in common with your friend up until a certain age where you guys go separate ways and make different decisions and then you see the consequences that you have to deal with as a result of those decisions, whether they're good or bad. Yep. You know, there was also another beautiful moment, because I plan not to release any spoilers here, but there was another beautiful Mm -hmm. moment between Missy and Alicia where, you know, like you said, they were two childhood friends, but they made different decisions that ultimately led their lives in different directions. And there was a beautiful moment when there was clarity between them, when Mm -hmm. Alicia understood who Missy is and why she is who she is, and when Missy understands Alicia. And I thought that was just a beautiful moment, not only between, you know, two women, but two black women who come from the same place and who have made different life decisions, but they Mm -hmm. still, there's still that love there. And I thought that was a beautiful, um, you know, scene. And I'm very happy that that was included in the film because a lot of times the breakdown is just simply misunderstanding and not being willing to open right. up here with the other person, um, you know, has to say. But I have to tell you, I was mad yes. with you for half of the film. I, I know. Like, this is my boo. Now, I love her, but, you know, and you, just, <laughs> and you played it so well, and it was so convincing. Thank and, you. And, and yet understanding, you know, yet understanding, yeah. because as a mom, you know, I understood that, right. you know. Yeah. Just don't talk to him because we don't know. You might pick up a piece of candy. We don't know. We don't know how to do Exactly. Exactly. And then I think it's just a lot of truth in that character just speaks to what it's like being um, a black woman in America, raising a black son. Mm -hmm. Um, And like I said, just really wanting to protect him and 
do what's right by the code of, of the, the code that she trusts and believes in, which is the code of the street, the code of the black. And um, she does a really good job. I respect her loyalty too. Yeah, I, I definitely respected it and understood it. Absolutely. Well, it's just such a pleasure to talk to all of you all. Now, I can take off my shoes and lay back in my chair and talk about the film for the rest of the day, but I know you have other things to do. But um, just congratulations on a, a, a sincerely wonderful project that is going to be so impactful, and it's so timely, and it's so perfect for right now. And I just wish you all the most success with this. And um, just, Dion, keep making these films for me, man. Just keep making these films for me. And um, make sure I get that. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Have a great day, guys, and congratulations. You too. Okay. Bye. Bye Bye.